بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد In our treaties in our study of Aqidah al-Wasatiyah we came to the portion of the treaties where Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala uh, is making affirmation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves justice and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-'adl is the most just Allah tabarak wa ta'ala he loves those who are purified he loves those uh, who are patient etc and so the beautiful thing about this treaty is the Sheikh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah is that he is he brings it full of evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah so there's no escape for those people who try to squirm out and say no Allah shouldn't be described like that or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like this or isn't like that but rather Shaykh al-Islam brings us the evidence from the Quran then the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam affirming those divine attributes and names of Allah azza wa jal qala Allah ta'ala fi kitabi al-kareem this is dalil ala these are evidences for the that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves subhana and that he uh, is the most just qala subhana أَحِلَّتْ لَكُمْ بَحِيمَةُ الْأَنْعَامِ إِلَّا مَا يُطْلَى عَلَيْكُمْ غَيْرُ مُحِلَّ السَّيِّدِ وَأَنْتُمْ حُرُمٌ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّكُمْ مَا يُرِيدُ أو إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَحْكُمُ مَا يُرِيدُ وَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى فَمَنْ يُرِدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرُهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ وَمَنْ يُرِدَ وَمَنْ يُرِدْ أَنْ يُضِلَّهُ يَجْعَلْ يَجْعَلْ صَدْرُهُ ضَيِّقٍ حَرَجٍ كَأَنَّمَا يَسَعَّدُ فِي السَّمَاءِ وَقَوْلُهُ وَأَحْسَنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ وَقَوْلُهُ وَقْسِتُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِتِينَ وَقَوْلُهُ فَمَا اسْتَقَامُوا لَكُمْ فَاسْتَقِيمُوا فَاسْتَقِيمُوا لَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ وَقَوْلُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ التَّوَابِينَ وَيُحِبُّ الْمُتَطَهِّرِينَ وَقَوْلُهُ قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهُ وَقَوْلُهُ فَسَوْفَ يَأْتِي اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَهُ وقوله إن الله يحب يحب الذين يقاتلون في سبيله صفا كأنهم بنيان مرصوص وقوله وهو الغفور الودود all of those ayats those ayats في كتاب الله they all illustrate for us that Allah سبحانه وتعالى possesses the care the divine attribute of love that Allah سبحانه وتعالى is the غفور الودود he is the all uh, forgiving and the most loving subhanahu wa ta'ala the most compassionate tabaraka wa ta'ala and they also affirm that Allah loves justice and Allah is the most just in the first verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said lawful to you for food are all the beasts of cattle except that which will be announced to you therein game also being unlawful when you assume ihram for hajj or umrah verily allah commands that which he wills and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and whomsoever allah wills to guide he opens his breast to islam and whomsoever he wills to send astray he makes his breast close and constricted as if he is climbing up to the sky and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and do good truly Allah loves al-muhsinun meaning the good doers those people who love righteousness and do righteous deeds and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and be equitable verily Allah loves those who are equitable meaning those who are just 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So long as they are true to you, stand true to them. Verily Allah loves al-muttaqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are the pious and righteous. So it shows again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. He possesses the attribute of love and compassion, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Truly Allah loves those who turn unto Him in repentance and loves those who purify themselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you really love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you. Meaning that was an order for the Prophet wasallam to say to, to the people that if you really love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you. That's also evidence to show us to follow the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and that loving the Prophet wasallam is, is uh, an obligation upon us and it is also a part of loving Allah. If you really love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you. So if you want to get the love of Allah, it's practicing the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. That is the way. That means practicing the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in our da'wah. Practice the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and how we treat one another. Practice the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in our uh, buying and selling in our marriage and our transactions and how we interact with one another socially, economically, physically. And in every which way, and how we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of those things, they all make up the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those things he uh, accepted and agreed. So if you want to get the, gain the love of Allah, follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa, la, wa, la wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the last verse, Allah will bring the people whom he will love and they will love him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Verily Allah loves those who fight in His cause in rows, in ranks, as if they were a solid structure. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who fight fi sabilillah, and they fight together. Ka'annuhum bunyanum marsus. You know, as if they were one single solid structure. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And He is off forgiving, full of love towards the pious, who are real true Islamic believers of, uh, of Tawheed. This is Surah Al-Buruj. And He is off forgiving, full of love. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is off forgiving. وَهُوَ الْغُفُورُ Al-wudud. He's off forgiving, full of love. So this shows us that Allah has those characteristics of compassion and love, and that He is the most forgiving. The off forgiving, as they also translate it. The Ashairah and the Mu'tazila, as we mentioned, that they are from amongst the Mu'attala and Ahl Kalam, they deny the attribute of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their contention is that it creates an illusion of shortcoming from among the creatures. And love indicates an inclination towards the person who is the object of love or derives pleasure from that person. So the, the Ashari, the Asha'ira, they turn the attribute of love into the attribute of intention. So again, this is how the Asha'ira, as we said before, they practice ta'wil, they practice tahrif. They change the meaning, the way in which, the, which is actually a form of negation, as we mentioned before, that they change the meaning to fit something that fits their intellect, that it feels comfortable with them because they feel that if we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, then that this is an attribute that has naqs or has shortcomings. And instead they change it to mean something else. So the Asha'ira turned the attribute of love into the attribute of intention, as we mentioned arada before, that Allah has that uh, attribute as well. And say that the love of Allah and his slaves is nothing more than the fact that he intends to give them respect and reward. This is from their ta'wil, their explanation. But this is not, there's no evidence of that from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Ahl Sunnah, they affirm it as Allah affirms it for himself and as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed it about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and in this respect, the Asha'ira also, they, they have this same uh, view with other attributes, views about the attributes of uh, agreement, of agreeing, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath, and so forth. According to them, all of these 
are in the sense of reward and retribution, that they refer to punishment and they refer, refer to reward, like ni'mah or blessings, instead of going to the meaning of which they're understood in the Arabic language and which they are understood uh, by the Salaf as by the pious predecessors, Rahimahumullah Jami'an. The Mu'tazila, on the other hand, they do not accept the attributes of intentions uh, they do not accept that the attributes of intentions are established with the self of Allah, meaning with the thatia, as we mentioned, thatia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's self. They do... Uh, so, in fact, they negate more so than the... Uh, the Asha'ira, the Asha'ira, they practice a tahrif, they change the meaning, whereas the Mu'attila or the Mu'tazila, they negate those, those attributes. And in an authentic hadith, and we'll get to the hadith soon, but I wanted to mention this as, as uh, Imam Haras, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned this in his explanation of Aqidah Tawasatiya. He mentioned the hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, which came in Bukhari and Muslim. Where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, it was narrated by Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, "Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan, qala li Jibril alayhi salam, inni uhibbu falanan, fa uhibbuhu." Qala fa yaqulu Jibril alayhi salam li ahli as-samaa, "Inna rabbukum 'azza wa jall yuhibbu falanan, fa uhibbuhu." Qala fa yuhibbuhu ahli as-samaa. Wa يُدَعُوا لَهُ الْقَبُولَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَإِذَا أَبْغَضَهُ فَمَثِيلُ ذَلَكَ رواه بخاري ومسلم beautiful beautiful hadith in this hadith the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said indeed when the mighty and magnificent Allah loves a slave he tells Jibril alayhi alayhi salatu wasalam I love that person you should also love him then Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam says to the inhabitants of heaven, Your Lord loves that per- particular person, so all of you love him. Then the inhabitants of the heaven or of heaven also love him. And he is given recognition on the earth, meaning acceptance on earth. And when Allah keeps uh, enmity with someone or Allah has enmity towards someone, then that same person, that same thing happens in this case also, meaning uh, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam is, is told to dislike this person because they are an evil, wicked person. And then the people of, of Jannah, they are also ordered to dislike this person. And then that person will not benefit in this life nor the next. In another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, this is in the hadith of Sahih Muslim, where the Prophet ﷺ said, Inna Allah katab al-ihsan ala kulli shay. Fida qatal, uh, qataltum fa'assinu qatla. Wa idha dhabahtum fa'assinu dhabaha. Wa li yuhadda ahadakum shafratuhu wa li yurih dhabihatuhu. Ru'ahu uh, Muslim. In this hadith that was collected, it was the hadith in Sahih Muslim. The hadith of Shaddad bin Aus radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Allah has made it compulsory to do good for everything. When you have to behead a person or when you have to execute a person or what have you, do it in a good manner. If it becomes necessary under the law for capital punishment for someone, do it in an excellent manner. Don't be cruel and excessive and, and so forth. And when you slaughter an animal, do it well. You must keep your knife sharpened and the animal to be slaughtered must have been kept comfortably. This is the statement of the Prophet wasallam, showing us the rahmah, the mercy of Islam and the mercy of the Prophet wasallam, and that Islam orders us to be, that it's an obligation to do good in everything, to be, have itqan. And also it shows us, which is the main per- point, it shows us that uh, that Islam orders us to be just and that this is uh, something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to be just and equitable and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
the Shaykh is using it also as evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves this attribute, he orders this attribute, and that he is the most equitable and the most just. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that should encourage us to repent and do righteous. And I want to end by reading a statement of Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the tabi'een, meaning the um, students of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, when it came, when the, the verse, uh, this was his explanation, his tafsir of the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ordering the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ to, Allah, uh, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, if you love Allah, meaning to tell the people this, if you love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِ Then follow me. يُحْبِبُكُمُ Allah. Then Allah will love you. And we already talked about that if we want to gain Allah's love, it's by following the sunnah. That's what's going to help us to gain love. By following the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, not the sunnah of our shaykh necessarily. If our shaykh has mukhalifat, if he goes against the sunnah. Because we find some groups who are groups of Muslims and groups of people who have left the fold of Islam because of their extremism in their worshipping. They've gone to the fact of worshipping their sheikhs and worshipping the awliya and praying and supplicating to them, eating their najasa, um, all kind of things, trying to get barakah by touching their gowns and look, taking pictures of them and crying and different things like this. That... If truly those people are awliya, what, what is the test that we know? The test that we know is, is contained in that ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ That is, say, if you love Allah, and if you love Allah, that means you're trying to be of the awliya. You know, you, you love a, إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبُكُمُ Allah. So Allah will love you. What is the condition for gaining Allah's love? To being one of those awliya of Allah. It's that you love and follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's it. It's, there's no shortcuts. There's no people who get to, as they say, balagha yaqeen, that we got to the state of yaqeen, to such a status, we no longer have to worship. We don't have to change our clothes. We're so pious and humble that our clothes are filthy and, and they have najasa and, and dirt and stuff, but we look so humble. No, that's not following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And nor is it, nor do you get to a state... Uh, 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 a state of worship that you've gone beyond the Prophet wasallam that you're better than the Prophet wasallam because that's the claim if you think that no longer your sheikh, your marid your alam your whoever that you follow has gotten to such a status they no longer have to worship Allah that means you're claiming that they're better than the Prophet wasallam, And in fact, all the Anbiya, because they all called the Tawheed, they all worshipped Allah until they had Yaqeen, and Yaqeen was death. Yaqeen, if you go to the Mufassirin, they explain it as death. So that means that the person who claims this is a lying, wicked Fajr. That means this person is lying. They're evil, and they are uh, just wicked beyond beyond description because they are lying on Allah. They're lying on the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they're lying to Ahl Islam, and they're deceiving the people, even who are non-Muslims, who look at deviants like this and believe that this is from Islam. What do you think the image of those people who see the the Rafida, those people in Iran when their festivities come up and they celebrate the martyrdom of Hassan and Hussein? What, what, what do you think the people see? They see that and they think that's Islam. That's absolutely so far from Islam. It's unknown in the history of Islam. It's only those wicked deviants who have so much extremism that they begin to cut themselves and they teach their children to cut and beat themselves. This is, this is a sunnah of those extreme uh, priests and so forth. Those people who, believed, who, who held themselves in seclusion and you know, believe that they are making atonement to Isa, to Christ. 
alayhi salatu wasalam, and that there's flogging themselves and beating themselves and bleeding. This is their sunnah. It's not the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, nor will it ever bring you closer to Allah, nor will it help you to gain the love of Allah. And the love of Allah is one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine attributes. And getting back to the verse, as we've gotten a little off track, Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, in the ayah, هي آية المحنة يعني أن الله امتهن من يدعي أنه يحب الله بذلك فإذا ظهر من عمله أنه متبع لرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم فهذا دليل المحبة so I'll, I'll end just that part of uh, وَإِنْ كَانَ مُخَالِفٍ فَهُوَ كَذَّابٍ Shaykh Hassan al-Basri, one of the tabi'een, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said about that verse, قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ He said, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Verily this ayat, or this verse, it is one of those verses of, of test, which is like a, a trial and a test for us. He said, and then he explains what he means. He says, يعني أن الله امتهن من يدعي أنه يحب الله بذلك That Allah tests the person who claims that he loves Allah with this verse. This verse right here is a test for those people who claim they love Allah. We love Allah. How many Sufis say they love Allah? But they don't even follow the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. So this ayat right here, as Hassan al-Basri said, is a test for those, for all of us to see are our actions in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. Then he said, فَإِذَا ظَهَرَ مِنْ عَمَلِهِ So if it uh, becomes apparent from his deeds, from his actions, that he is following the Messenger wasallam, then it is the leel of his love. That's evidence for his love. His evidence for his love is what? Is that he follows the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And if it is other than that, it going against that, then he is a liar. For huwa kadhabun. That's what Sheikh uh, Hassan al Basri, rahimahullah taala. And then he, he mentioned some other statements, but we'll end there. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with a class, with a bad, and bless us to be of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves by following the sunnah of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.